Greetings everyone, I am Dr. Francois Lowe, a GP anaesthetist, ER doctor and interventional pain physician in Kelowna, BC, Canada and clinical assistant professor in the Department of Family Practice at the University of British Columbia. I'm very honoured to present to you a summary of uh, the findings of an article that will be published in the May edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Treatment of Temporomandibular Dysfunction with Hypertonic Dextrose Injection slash prolotherapy a randomized controlled trial with long-term partial crossover. The study would not have been possible without the assistance of co-authors Dr. David Rabago from the University of Wisconsin, Dr. Dean Reeves, a physiatrist in private practice in Roland Park, Kansas, and Dr. Stan Lam from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, as well as staff in Invermere. The main take-home message from the study is that in patients with difficult to treat temporomandibular dysfunction, Simple intraarticular injection with hypertonic dextrose prolotherapy was an effective treatment for this condition and significantly outperformed control injection. The setting of the study was a private medical office in Invermere, British Columbia, Canada. And in this study, 42 participants, 54 joints, meeting TMD criteria, were randomized one to one to three monthly intraarticular injections consisting of one milliliter of 20% dextrose in 0.2% lidocaine in the active group versus 0.2% lidocaine in sterile water in the control group. The injector, office manager and participants were blinded. Following this phase, at three month follow-up, allocation groups were revealed. Participants in both groups were offered open label injection of 20% dextrose in 0.2% lidocaine monthly on a by request basis through one year. Inclusion criteria were adults 19 to 80 years with moderately severe and chronic, i.e. more than three months, pain and jaw dysfunction, defined as a score of six or more on a zero to 10 numerical rating scale, uh, where zero meant no pain or dysfunction, and 10, the worst pain or dysfunction imaginable. Dysfunction was defined as difficulty chewing, jaw fatigue with eating, tension in the jaw, or grinding of teeth. Exclusion criteria included allergy to lidocaine, dental problems, or sinus pathology potentially contributing to pain, pain in any other anatomical site, persistently greater than that in the TMJ area, chronic intake of NSAIDs or corticosteroids, or active rheumatologic conditions. The approach used was a closed mouth approach with the jaw relaxed. Ultrasound was not used to improve generalizability. The point of needle entry was one centimeter below the apex of the zygomatic arch with a 45 degree cranial and 10 degree posterior angulation using a one inch 30 gauge needle. Primary and secondary measures included the following. Zero to 10 numerical rating scale score for facial pain and dysfunction. Maximal interincisal mouth opening distance uh, measured in millimeters. Percentage of joints with 50% or more improvement in pain and dysfunction, as well as patient satisfaction. During the first three months, i.e. the double-blinded randomized trial, the mean NRS decrease in pain for the dextrose group was 4.3, whereas it was 1.8 in the control group with a P of 0 0.02. The decrease in dysfunction scores in the dextrose group during the double-blinded phase was 3.5, whereas it was one in the control group with a P of 0 0.008. The difference in maximal interincisal opening was actually increased in the dextrose group in the first three months with an improvement of 1.5 millimeters and there was a decrease in the control group of 1.8 millimeters. Participant satisfaction on a one to five scale at three months was higher in the dextrose group at 3.6 versus 2.3 points in the control group with a P of 0 0.02. Data collection at 12 months for all groups showed the following. A decrease in NRS pain score of 68%, a decrease in the dysfunction score of 64%, an increase in the maximal interincisal opening um, of 2.5 millimeters. Furthermore, at 12 months, there was a reduction of more than 50% in pain seen in 70% of jaws and there was a reduction of more than 50% pertaining to dysfunction seen in 72% of jaws. Now, if we consider that more than 15% of the adult North American population suffers from TMD, 
This is indeed exciting news. A simple and inexpensive, easy to administer intraarticular injection that could be done in a doctor or dentist's office is an improvement on the current treatment options for TMD. The beneficial effects of dextrose are likely multimodal and include salutary effects on fibroblasts and chondrocytes, as well as an analgesic effect on pain-producing C-fibers. We also know that dextrose prolotherapy has been found in various systematic reviews and randomized controlled trials to be beneficial in painful MSK conditions. And this study adds to that body of knowledge. I thank you very much for your time. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.